Now, you and your colleagues at the Cleveland Clinic were also studying the drug and doing IVIS trials of the drug. Um, I'd, like you, I'd like you to describe now what, where we are today, what we've learned in the year since the trials were first stopped, and, and where, what you think is going to be happening. So let's start with what you've learned in this past year. So, so fortunately, at the time that, that development of the compound was stopped, we in fact completed a large IVIS study and in fact two large carotid IMT studies have been completed as well. They were all reported at the ACC. The IVIS study was called Illustrate and that showed that treatment with tocetrapib raising HDL by 61% with an incremental lowering of LDL of 20% on top of a statin didn't lower the rate of progression of coronary atherosclerosis. And in fact that was exactly the same result as the carotid IMT investigators reported from Radiance 1 and Radiance 2, the two large IMT studies that were performed. So we went back to the drawing board after that, and we started to look at the question, what is the relationship between increasing HDL with torcetrapib and the effect of torcetrapib on the rate of plaque progression? And really the, the hypothesis is that if there is a problem with the class, and that by raising HDL, you're generating dysfunctional HDL particles, then in the patients who achieve the highest levels of HDL, one might in fact see progression of atherosclerosis, or in fact won't see regression. And, and that's really what we expected to see when we did these studies from the so start. So this, this is the theory of that the drug was producing a pro-atherogenic HDL. That's right. So I think that on a combination of the three clinical imaging studies that showed a lack of efficacy on progression of disease, and a clinical event trial that had been stopped due to an excess rate of mortality. There were a number of hypotheses that we had to look at. One was, is, are we generating HDL particles that are no longer protective and in fact may in fact be pro-atherogenic? Secondly, is this all the blood pressure? Or third, does it represent some other not yet defined off-target toxicity of the compound? And so that was really the rationale moving forward with doing this next series of exploratory analyses because if it's a problem with the compound and not with the concept of raising HDL by inhibiting CTP, then that's an important finding to move forward with other inhibitors of CTP that may not possess the same toxicity. So that was the rationale for our ongoing analyses.